Surprise, surprise, Jennifer Lopez and engagements and marriage go together like peanut butter and jelly, like Kool-Aid and sugar, like burgers and fries, like salt and pepper, like relaxers and motions, pink or hair oil moisturizer. They just go together. This is a woman that loves love. Jennifer Lopez loves love. And we happy for her. Love is a great thing. I'm never going to hate when somebody finds someone that they want to spend their life with, even if it takes them two, three, four or five times. Now, you guys know, as soon as you get happy and as soon as you get your life on track, the devil got to come up from the gutter to try and drag you down and ran on your parade. And the devil, in this case, was Jose Squinty-Eyed Canseco. Yes, I said Jose Squinty-Eyed Canseco. Let me tell you something. When you're dealing with somebody, it's all in the eyes. Don't trust nan person. They got them little beady eyes to be all over the place. They be squinting for no reason and blinking like this and, and transforming. They got spirits on them. Don't trust them. Just I'm, I'm just letting y'all know. Don't trust them. So as soon as the picture of the engagement ring hit the internet, Jose Canseco hit his Twitter. And if you guys go to Jose Canseco's Twitter, what you will see that this man posts on Twitter a lot. Like, not just, you know, once an hour, a few times a day. No, Jose posts on Twitter like a 13-year-old girl that just discovered the internet. It's like back to back to back to back. It reminds me of someone that's having like a manic episode and they ain't nobody paying them no damn attention. So they can't help but to get on Twitter and I guess to talk to their fans. Anyway, Jose says that A-Rod has been cheating on J-Lo with Jessica Canseco this whole damn entire time. And, 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 and supposedly, he is so concerned about Jennifer that he just got to let her know before she walked down the aisle. You know, you didn't want to tell her before she got exclusive with him. You didn't want to tell Jennifer before she bought a house with him and before she, you know, put him all over the Internet in her pictures and with her kids. You just wanted her to know before she got married. OK, Jose, I don't believe you. I don't believe that, you know, you really care about Jennifer. I just think you want to be messy. Ain't nobody paid attention to you in um 10 years. And this was your Little, you know, your little 15 seconds of, pain, uh, of fame. This was your five seconds of fame because this is all you're going to get from us. So Jose Canseco used to be married to Jessica Canseco. If you don't know who that is, there was a failed VH1 reality show back in the day called Hollywood Exes. It had Jessica Canseco, Drea Kelly back when she was proud of her name. She was proud to say that Robert, dick him down, pissing your mouth. Kelly was her ex-husband. Yeah, yeah, back in them days. Drea Kelly, as well as Nicole Murphy, one of the most beautiful women on the planet and Maite Garcia who used to be married to the great prince Jessica you know she she wasn't really a standout on the show in my opinion she did talk a lot of shit to people she did dance and, and, and could get the party started but never on that show did she say that she was connected to A-Rod well fast forward Jose is saying that Jessica has been with A-Rod the whole time, that A-Rod used to come over and work out, you know, at Jessica and Jose's house back back in the day, and that he used to take his shirt off and have Jessica oil him up, and that he used to put his erections in Jessica's faces, and a, you know, I mean, and that, and that A-Rod used to just put his erections in Jessica's faces, and uh, Jose, I guess you just, you sat there and you did nothing. You know, you couldn't have been that mad to let this man come over your house multiple times and disrespect you in your home, if this is true. He claims, Jose claims that he used to come home, you know, because his dick did not work anymore. Mm -hmm. See, them steroids might give him big muscles and help them hit balls, but then it affects their balls and then their balls are now useless. They swing the bat better, but they can't use their own bat no more. This is according to Jose. I'm just reporting the news. So Jose said that his penis basically shriveled up and it was just like a useless uh, piece of sausage. It was no good. Nobody wanted it. So this is where A-Rod stepped in. A-Rod stepped in to pleasure his wife in ways that, that, that Jose just couldn't. And you know, Jose said he used to come home and there would be semen on the floor and semen on his robes and semen here, semen there, semen everywhere. Where, you know, and he didn't do none, you know, but now he wants to speak out. You know, Jose Canseco, I always knew that I didn't like you. And let me tell you why. See, your snitching ass. See, when you told on Mike McGuire back in the day and exposed that he was using steroids in your little failed book, I knew you wasn't shit back then, Jose Canseco.
Because see, Jose, it's okay to tell your own business, but what you should not do is be telling the business of your teammates, especially what goes on in the sanctity of the damn locker room. Jose, Jose, you mad, Jose? You mad at nobody paying you no attention, Jose? So now you got to try to shit on this engagement. Now, let me say this. There has been rumors about A-Rod being out in these streets for years. He is community dick of the baseball world. We all know that. This is nothing new. So in this relationship with Jennifer, was there probably some overlap at first? Yeah, that overlap when you're dating somebody and you know you like them, but you still got your side piece and you're not quite sure if the one that you actually like is going to work out. So you keep both until you know that the one that you actually like is the one and you let go of your side piece. Yeah, something like that. So, you know, did he probably step out on Jennifer? In the beginning, probably. Once it got serious, I don't think he did. Jennifer says that she loves him and she trusts him. And they still getting married and she don't give a damn what none of y'all got to say. But I got a quick question for y'all. When you got friends that get married multiple damn times, do I have to come to each one of your weddings? Do I have to keep sending gifts? I mean, damn, if this is your fourth marriage, your fifth engagement, you should you should have this on lock by now. I shouldn't have to give you nothing. I sent you a blender in the second marriage. I sent you an air fryer in the third. You just, I just, I, I can't send you, you, you get married four or five times. I can't send you nothing but a text message and a Hallmark gift card. Um, moving right along, you know, you know, no, no, one more thing. The same goes for people that have all these babies too. If you a breeder, if you pop these kids out like Skittles, don't expect your friends to give you a gift each and every single time you have a baby. You better use the gifts we gave you for the first three and use them for the next four. Moving right along, congratulations to Screamer for Hudson. Jennifer Hudson will be playing Aretha Franklin in her biopic. This is really, really good news. I like when biopics actually make sense. And, you know, Jennifer was an R is an R&B star, so is Aretha. Jennifer had a lot of relationship issues a lot of drama in her life, so did Aretha. Aretha was out here slanging in them country bumping streets. Don't get it twisted. So I hope that they tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth in this biopic and I'm excited to see Jennifer play that. Jennifer's weight has, you know, went from, you know, you know, you know, zero to a hundred real quick. Aretha's weight went from zero to a hundred, you know, over a certain amount of years. So I don't know if she's going to be playing big Aretha or little Aretha or mid-sized Aretha. I don't know, but I will go see it. I will go support. Congratulations. Uh, please do this biopic some justice. Don't do us like y'all did Aaliyah. And I'm going to move right along. Let's talk about George Foreman real quick. So George Foreman, his daughter, uh, one of 10 kids that he had, you know, by the way, he named all his boys George, George one, two, three, and all down the line because he couldn't think of another name. But anyway, on a serious note, his daughter Freeman, Frida Foreman committed suicide this past week. She had a husband and two kids that she left behind. The reports did not say why she committed suicide or if she left a suicide note, but when I say my heart broke for George Foreman, it really did, and this is why. George Foreman made an Instagram post about it, and he said, this is the first Sunday without Frida. And that right there, I just, I felt his pain through the words and through, the, you know, through the, through the phone. Suicide is a real thing out here. It seems to be more prevalent as the years go on. And people just got to realize mental health is important. Just like you go work out, just like you take your medication for high blood pressure or for lupus or for liver problems or whatever, you got to take care of this. The mind is very powerful and really controls the rest. It starts up here. Anything you think of up here, you can make your body do. So I just wish that this country took mental health more seriously, but on a smaller scale, because talking about the government and mental health, that's another video for another day. But I do want to say this, check on your loved ones, check on 
Not only your friends and family that you know was going through stuff because people seem to love to be in your business and in your tea when you when you struggling, when you got boyfriend and girlfriend drama, when your kids acting up. People seem to want to hear all about that. But when it doesn't seem like you're going through nothing, your phone don't ring. So that's what I want to say. Check on your strong friends, not just your weak ones. Check on the ones that you think always got it together, the ones that you think is so smart they can figure out their way through anything. Go check on them because they need people too. They need someone to vent to too. That friend that your whole circle of friends vents to or that family member that all the siblings tell all their business to, they take in all of that and that weighs on them. Go check on them. Check on your strong friend. Check on your strong family member. Just do it. Moving right along. Let's talk about this college scam with Lion, Lori Laughlin, and phony Felicity Huffman. I made a little video about this. So I don't want to give these helpers too much time because they already took up enough from enough people out there. But I hope that they have to pay for what they did. Y'all broke the law. Y'all had no business going out there doing what you was doing. Lori, why would you lie, Lori? Because you want your daughter to go to college, Lori, even though she don't want to go to college. I mean, hell, she got a YouTube channel. She got a bunch of subscribers. She's making a bunch of money. You on TV and you too damn lazy and cheap to just pay for the college education that the girl don't even want. What's wrong, Lori? Lori, you know, and let's hop on you, Felicity Huffman. You know you was on the Desperate Housewives, but I didn't know you were a Desperate Housewife. What's up, everybody? Go ahead over to the 9 Day Shopping Network to check out these melanated earrings, bags, and their beautifully designed footwear. And you better hurry up, because they currently got to sell on all the Afrocentric wooden drop earrings. It's buy two and get a third pair for free. That's right, you heard that correctly. It's buy two pairs and you get the third pair for free. Also, don't forget to subscribe to their email list to get those new sales and discount codes at nightanddaynetmarket.com. The link to the products is in the description box below. Shee I didn't know you were struggling like that, you know. You know, you people in the elite and, 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 and rich people always want to look down on the regular folk and say, you know, if you just work harder, you could pull yourself up. And if you just study better, if you made more grades. And I'm here to tell y'all that none of that shit matters. Your grades don't matter. Your GPA don't matter. I don't care how many essays you write, how good your English is. At the end of the day, college is for network. Your network will expand your net worth. Point blank. It ain't about an A and a B. So when you got kids, I'm talking, I'm talking to regular folk now. When you got kids and you raising them up and they getting a straight A's and straight B's, that's good. Congratulate them. Do all that. But you better be teaching these kids how to network. You better be teaching these kids how to socialize and interact with others. Because all them good grades got a lot of us 90s babies was, you know, going to college for majors we don't need to be doing and a bunch of debt and still can't find a damn job. And if you do find a damn job, you working in middle management. You still got all these white folks over you telling you what to do what you can't do you still can't be yourself it's just a lot and it's a trick i'm so upset about this because lori lying ass lori and phony felicity Y'all took the spots from a lot of people that deserve that. See, people who don't have rich parents, we can't pay our way through. See, when we take the ACT and the SAT, we got proctors looking over our shoulders. Hell, we can't even wear a damn digital watch to go take the damn test. Yet you paid a proctor, you paid a proctor, you paid a proctor to basically take the test for your kid. Lori, that's how much faith you got in your kid. You know she dumb as hell. You know she tired and through. And you said, damn, I got to pay her way through because she ain't got the mental capacity to do it on her damn own. Lori. Lori. Really? I need a list of every proctor you paid off, every teacher you paid off, every coach you paid off. I need you guys to pay reparations to all the kids that couldn't get into the school that they wanted to because your punk ass kids was taking their spot. Because yo kid was too lazy to get the book and sit down and study, yet you got kids that's in high school, working, taking care of their siblings, and paying their way through college. 
the hell's going on out here? I love that y'all being exposed for the faint phonies and fakes that y'all are, because that's exactly what y'all are, phony and fake. You guys, you better wake up to what's going on out here in this system. A lot of things are made to keep you enslaved. A lot... <sighs> You're told that you have to go to college when in reality you go on job interviews and don't nobody give a damn about what you did in college. It's all about experience and who you know. You told that you got to get married and you got to get a house and you got to have 2.5 kids, but then you marry somebody that you're not really in love with. You're miserable for most of your life. If you get divorced, you're losing half of your shit and maybe your kids too. You have these kids that you don't really want either. You're never really happy. Nobody tells you that kids cost $250,000 over an 18 year period to raise. Nobody tells you that it's easy to get married, but it's hard as hell not to. I mean, if you listen to the vows, you will see for yourself that it says, till death do you part. Till death do you part. That's the real Illuminati. That's a real ritual, if you ask me. That's some spirit bonding right there. You know, you guys, I just want, I just want all my troopers out there I want us to think for ourselves. I want you guys to be able to live the life that you want. If you don't want a house, you ain't got to buy no damn house. That don't make you no failure. If you ain't got a credit card, so motherfucking what? You can pay with everything with cash if you choose to. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You ain't backwards and you ain't behind. If you ain't got cable, screw cable. Ain't nothing on TV but filth anyway. Live the life that you want. Don't feel pressured to be with somebody. Be by your damn self. Learn to love yourself. Get in tune with you. Once you learn you, you're going to learn that you're pretty damn cool. And once you're comfortable with yourself, you can invite the correct person into your life. You know, once you're healed, not a broken person, just invite another broken person into your life and laying up and having these broken ass kids. But back on Lori, Lori, I hope you pay for everything that you did because you was dead ass wrong. You broke the law. And my people, people that look like me, the 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 Chandreas of the world and the Guadalupe's of the world that lie on the school district form just so their babies can go to a safe school and don't have to get have to see their kids get their ass kicked every day. They do that and y'all throw them in jail. Y'all throw the book at them. Y'all throw bricks at them and throw the dirt on them and put the tomb stone over them so lori and felicity the same is coming for you you got to pay for your wrongdoings everything done in the dark will come out to the light and i don't care how much you hide it when it's gonna come out it's going to come out lori you low down as hell but you'll be all right you know you sat there and lied on all them forms because you, you know, wanted your daughter to go to a certain school and be around a certain type of people. You know, you don't want her around the regular folk. And now you might go to prison around the very same people that you took opportunities from. You know, the very same people that maybe could have been a football star, but they didn't get into school. So they went to the streets, maybe could have been a scientist, but they got discouraged when they couldn't afford to go to college. So they went to selling puss on the street. You gonna be with them very same people. If I was the judge, and if it was even possible, I would want to order you to have to donate a part of your salary to the Black Lives Matter movement and to make you have to go and serve your community for the rest of your life. The very same impoverished community that you took from, Lori. You tired and through. Moving right along, let's talk about Rich Dollars and Mariah Lynn. You know, I want more money. I want more money. Once upon a time, not long ago, I was a hoe. And I still am. So Mariah Lynn, you, 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 you trip. You trip, baby girl. You trip. Rich Dollars and Mariah Lynn are on Lies and Hip Flop, the New York franchise. And on the reunion, New, uh, Mariah Lynn got up and she proclaimed her love for Rich. Richard, she proclaimed her love. That's another name y'all look out for too. Anybody named Richard, they ain't no damn good. Uh, uh, just, just watch it. Watch people named Richard. Anyway, maybe I just got bad experience with Richards. Um. <laughs> anyway, so Mariah Lynn got 
up there and on the stage and she just proclaimed her love for him and she was proud to say that she sleep in his bed every night. So now we already know that when y'all filming scenes, they ain't really your houses. Those are broke down Airbnbs. I already told y'all that. But she was proud to say that she sleep on his pillow every night and she was proud to say that she can be herself with him and tell him her deepest, darkest secrets and, and she didn't aborted two of his babies. Now man, she gonna go, go, she gonna go home with him tonight and she want the world to know that she loves him. And Richard, Richard made her look crazy when he just looked at her like, you, you, you just, you just a long time hoe. Like, I don't love you like that. I don't know. I don't know. What do y'all take from that? On one hand, he got to care something about her to have her in his life for eight years and to get her pregnant twice. But, um, he ain't claiming her. And Mariah Lynn, if I was you, I would not go back to him, sis. You made yourself look dumb. You never claim a nigga that don't claim you. He's supposed to claim you in public first. Any man that wants you and want to lock you down is supposed to shout that stuff from the mountaintops. You supposed to be all over his social media. He's supposed to have a rock on your ring after eight years and two abortions. Stop sending babies to heaven, Mariah Lynn. It's not even fair. If you go, if mm, 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 if y'all gonna be messing around, at least get on birth control or use the rubbers. Abortions is not birth control. You are killing a child. I'm not saying that it needs to be illegal, but I'm saying that you're still killing a child that has a soul that you will have to pay for one day. But anyway, Mariah Lynn, you made yourself look dumb. Naya was absolutely right. You proclaimed your love for somebody that don't want you. You got a lot of abandonment issues. You know, you come from a mother that was a whore. You know, you've had to take care of your siblings, but you deserve a family of your own. You deserve a man that wants you and wants to claim you too, Mariah Lynn. So don't, don't do yourself like that. I can tell that wasn't scripted. That was real because that came out of nowhere. Richard was very surprised. And Richard, you know, if you're going to string this woman along and you really don't want to be with her, you just need to tell her. You know, this, this this ain't even fair at this point. This woman is begging for you to claim her. And you don't. And you won't. You know, maybe you still love your ex. I don't know. But your ex is about to go to prison. Moving right along. Let's talk about Raz B and this Millennium Tour. Raz B quit and then got back on the tour Pretty doggone quickly. So Raz B is in B2K. B2K is basically doing a comeback tour. Raz B made allegations against Chris Stokes, which is the group's former manager, or maybe current, I don't know. He made allegations that Chris Stokes raped all of them and Marcus Houston had a, a, a place in, rob, in, in raping them allegedly. And, uh, and everybody know about it, but nobody's doing something, nothing about it. But let me say this, Raz B... I agree with you that you should not have to be exposed to your abuser. You should be able to come to work, do your job, and that man don't need to be around. Y'all are all grown men now, so why are y'all letting him come around? And why are y'all excusing this? So I stand with Raz B on that. My problem with Raz B is that he makes a statement and he retracts it. He does something and then he comes back from it. Raz B, you got to make a decision and stick with it. Because when you make an allegation against someone and then you retract it, you automatically lose your credibility. I don't care if it's proven later. And I believe you. I believe you based on how you are, based on how the other members acted, based on how you and your parents were paid off. So you were sold to. I absolutely believe it. If y'all don't know, Impressive, the YouTube channel did a really good job of breaking down the whole Chris Stokes situation. I think it's like a 30 minute video. Check it out if you want to know more, but I'm going to summarize it. Back, back, back in the day when the group was coming up, Chris Stokes was a manager. He used to have a house. He used to basically convince all the kids parents that all the boys needed to live together and they needed to live with him he got them drunk he got them hired in the Kuda brown and he popped their cherries that was how the story went down as time went on and the boys got older some of them coped with it better and some of it didn't and I can look in Raz's eyes and tell that he hasn't gotten over that the man is hurt the man's virginity was literally taken Way before it should have been, he ain't gay, but then a gay act was forced upon him and his boys, his brothers, ain't did a damn thing. Ooh, camera got messed up there when I was going off, so I'm not sure where I left off on that Raspberry thing. But basically, he was being, he's, he's being forced to be exposed to his 
abuser, allegedly. But let me just say this, Raz B, if I was you, I don't care how much money was involved. I'm not going to be around somebody that did that stuff to me. Basically, every time you see Chris Stokes, it should be on sight. You should make you you should be ready to fight every single time you see this man. You should make it so uncomfortable for him that he don't come around and that nobody even feels comfortable with inviting him around. Get it together, Raz B. And I'm sorry that happened to you. And I just, I can't wait for Hollywood to be cleaned up. I don't think it ever will be, but I want it. Ooh, excuse me. I want it to be cleaned up. Ooh, wow. But further, let me say this. Another reason why Rasby is struggling so much internally with this is that at the end of the day, he has sex with Chris Stokes. Unwillingly, but he did. He has a soul tie with Chris Stokes. Not only did this man take his virginity and pop his cherry, he has a soul tie with him. So he will always be bonded with him until he get on his knees and pray to God to break that tie. And then he can break that hold that Chris has over them. Moving right along, we're going to go ahead and talk about Conor McGregor to end our celeb Saturday. Conor McGregor was caught via TMZ Sports smashing a fan's phone that wanted a picture. From what I saw in the video, it looked like the fan was black. I'm not really sure. There has been reports that Conor McGregor is a racist. I don't know that to be a fact, but let me just say this. Conor, you was dead wrong for that. You're used to getting your picture taken. You know you're famous and you know that you are a star. Hell, you are a showboaty kind of person. If you don't want your picture taken, you know, just say politely, hey, I don't want my picture taken. If they still do, okay, cool. But you have security for a reason. Let your security deal with the people that's invading your space. Don't put yourself in that position to now you getting felonies and misdemeanors and, 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 and lawsuits and, and, and assault charges all because you can't control yourself. You, you still think you in Ireland fighting in a bar, but you not. You know, you in America, we do things a little bit different. But Connor... You have not been arrested twice in our country, you know, at least that I know. And anytime a black athlete acts up, he's called all kinds of thugs and gangsters and monsters, you know, by the by the media because he's black and he's an athlete and he got big muscles and, you know, he committed a crime. So I'm going to say this, Conor McGregor, you are the thug of the week. You are the gangsta, the 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 Dublin gangsta. You know, we're going to call you a thug because that's what you are so that was our celeb saturday you know let me know what you guys think down below i uh who i went in there for a minute okay but i'm back now so you guys like comment and subscribe and uh we gonna keep doing these every week i will talk to you guys later